You know how they say behind every great man is a great woman? Well, something similar can be said about skateboarders, only it would go something like this. Behind every great skateboarder is a great photographer or filmer. If a trick were to happen and no one were there to photograph or film it in order for you to see it, did it really happen? Have you ever heard that other cliche, I'll believe it when I see it? Well, a skateboarder probably made that up. Think about everything you've seen and were inspired by in skateboarding, and I'll bet you most of it's been through the invention of photography or filmmaking. Throughout the evolution of skateboarding, there's always been the photographer or filmer right there by the skateboarder's side, ensuring that whatever happened, it would be documented for the world to see. If anything, I'll take you back, back in time, okay. to when I started skateboarding, um, which was 1987. And, of course, this was well before um, uh, the internet and things like that. Our only kind of way to see skateboarding, uh, other than the kids in your neighborhood or the kids downtown, was through, <clears throat> there's two magazines, maybe even three. Thrasher magazine, mm -hmm. Transworld Skateboarding. A friend of my brother's gave us a stack of Thrashers. Mm -hmm. and those were from around 1986, uh, early 1987. And that was the first time I saw skateboarding. The, the nature of skateboarding is you you go out and you ride your skateboard, and you, f you find different terrain, and, and, and you ride your wheels on it. And sometimes it's... You find yourself in a position where you know it's something that it's like a once in a lifetime deal, you know. And that was what that was what was happening. I'm sure everybody's seen the Dogtown Z Boys movie. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were they were breaking into people's backyards and, and skating their swimming pools. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know if they're gonna get kicked out, then you know better best to have a, uh, someone on hand to shoot pictures of it, just so you know it's documented. We're there. Mm -hmm this happened, you know, documentation is key. That's, that's the most important thing. You know, if I, I'll, I'll tell him like, hey dad, I just did this trick. He's like, did, did you get it on film? I'm like, nah, I didn't have it. Well, it didn't happen yet. It's, you know, it's kind of annoying, but mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's also kind of right, you know, because that's, that's the other part of, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, I'm jumping off, but that's the other part of, you know, documentation is if you can do like the most awesome trick ever, but if nobody saw it, then did it, did it really happen? It's the tree falling in the woods thing. You know, mm -hmm. like you have to have the, the photo evidence. And then sometimes, depending on the trick, it's best to have the video evidence to back up the photo. Yeah. You know? So this is a photograph, I believe it was taken by Grant Britton. Um, from, it was 1987. Um, the Pal Peralta uh, film, uh, The Search for Animal Chin. <clears throat> this is like the grand finale. They, they found the chin ramp, and the, the, the Powell team gets to, gets to skate it. Crazy thing about this photo, which, which I don't know if many of you, um, uh, if you'll notice, it's, it's really um, exquisite and very like um, <sighs> subversive marketing. Each rider has a Powell t-shirt on. They have their signature boards. Um, Tony Hawk always had, like, his pink helmet. Mike McGill had, like, they, they had all their sponsors. They were all rocking their sponsor stuff. The interesting thing is, too, um, a lot of these guys used to wear the, the Air Jordans, you know, which was very, like, uh, in vogue at the time, too, to have, like, a high-top sneaker. Mm -hmm. But to have Air Jordans was, like, super cool. There's a ledge out in front of an office building. And so this person has to sit in their office and look down at, at, at this ledge and they see, you know, a, a pack of three or four kids, you know, that look like street urchins come up and like whip their boards around and, you know, they're probably yelling. And, you know, skateboards are loud. Mm -hmm. They're loud. Uh, but, you know, this person has to sit there and watch that. You know, and they don't want to. They don't want to see. They don't want anybody having fun while they gotta work. You know what I mean? So <laughs> security, get them out. You know, and like the whole you know private property. This is mine. 
you know, we, you know, we as Americans, we, you know, we hold on to our property. You know, we can't have it there. Um, the techniques have definitely, you know, it, with, with, you know, as cameras advance, so do the tricks. Mm -hmm. You know, so in, in the 70s, you pretty much just had a guy with a point-and-shoot camera that, you know, he was just there. Or it was probably not point-and-shoot, I shouldn't say that. Uh, but you, did, you just kind of sat there and took the picture, you know. And, and, and now, you know, they got guys, they're, they're lining up their horizons right. You know, they have satellite flashes with strobes going off. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and then another, you know, with the di digital revolution, now guys are able to shoot sequences and not have to worry about, you know, blowing $300 worth of film just yeah. to get one trick. My name is Mark Eyestone, and I run a skate shop called Magic Bullet, and I've been riding a skateboard for over 20 years. Do a rolling top down, ready to fly on the street.